Okay, so we are moving on to unit six, and we are going to start with something called similar triangles. Um, similar triangles have a lot to do with ratios, so we will begin with what is a ratio. And a ratio is a comparison of two or more quantities. Okay, so comparison of two or more quantity. Um, ways to represent a ratio, they can be written as a fraction, a over b. They can be written in words, a to b. And they can also be written with a colon, a colon b. Okay. Um, ratios can be simplified. So this has an exclamation point because it's really important. So if you were asked to write a ratio, it should most likely be in simplified form. So I wouldn't write it as 2 to 4, I would write it as 1 to 2. All right, so here we're going to do some examples. We have a music store. It has 40 trumpets and 39 clarinets, 24 violins, 51 flutes, and 16 trombones in stock. Write each ratio in simplest form. Okay trumpets to violins in the order matter so trumpets is the first word so i said use that number first so i'll do 40 2 and it says violins and we have 24. Um, but the instructions do say simplest form and so i'll reduce that and that reduces to 5 to 3 if i divide them both by 8. okay flutes to clarinets i have 51 2 and 39 clarinets. Okay, that reduces through both divisible by 3, which leaves me with 51 divided by 3 is 17, and 39 divided by 3 is 13. Okay, trombones, we have 16 trombones, 2 trumpets, and we have 40 trumpets. And we can divide each of those by 8, and we can get 2 to 5. Violins to total number of instruments, so it changes things on. So violins is 24. Total number of instruments means we're going to have to add up all the instruments together. So I'll have to do the 40 trumpets plus the 39 clarinets plus the 24 violins plus the 51 flutes plus the 16 trombones, and I will get 170 total instruments, which does reduce. I can divide them both by 2, and I'll be left with 12 compared to 80. And again, those can be written different ways. It could be written as a fraction or with words. And I just, in this case, chose to write them with semicolon or with a colon. All right. Now into extended ratio, still a ratio, but it's a comparison of three or more. So it's a comparison of three or more. So it is a ratio, but it's a expanded ratio so it's extended there's more so they're often written they can be written like this a to b to c so you're comparing a lot more things in this case so an example that we can work on is the ratio of two complementary so there's a familiar word i'm going to pause there and complementary complementary means they're going to add to 90 degrees okay so that's a vocab word that we did way back when Okay, angles three to seven. Okay, find the measures of both angles. So what we do know is that um, three to seven means that three times a number is comparable to seven times that same number. So if you go back, when we reduced each of those, we reduced them by the same value. So essentially this is talking about those before they were reduced. So we're gonna talk about three times some number, making it not reduced any longer. And 7 times that same number will give us each of those full angles. And those have to be added to be complementary. So 90. So that's how that ratio is helpful. Okay, it's, it's like if I had twice of somebody else's, that could be a ratio where I'm going to have two times the same amount of their one amount. And then I can easily solve that. 10x equals 90. Divide both sides um, by x not by x, sorry, by 10, 
and I will get x is equal to 9. It didn't ask for the common factor. If it did, that would be our common factor between the two. It has to actually find the measure of each angle. So for one angle, I'll do 3 times 9, equaling 27 degrees. And another angle as 7 times 9, equaling 63 degrees. And I'll circle each of those. Okay, so now I'll do another example, the ratio of two supplementary. So a reminder on this vocabulary, supplementary means they add to 180 degrees, is 4 to 1. We'll do a similar thing, 4 times some common factor plus 1 times some common factor, you don't have to write the 1 necessarily, is going to add to 180. So we'll go ahead and simplify, 5x is equal to 180, divide both sides by 5, and I'll get x is equal to 36. So if I want to find each angle, I'll do 4 times 36 for one of them, and that will give me 144 degrees. And then my other angle is 1 times 36. You don't technically have to write that out, um, but you can. It's not going to hurt anything. And so we get 144 and 36 is our two angles. Okay. Here's an extended ratio, 4 to 7 to 9. The ratio of the measures of the angles in a triangle Find is 4 to 7 to 9, find the measure of each. Um, the sum of angles in a triangle are 180 degrees. Okay, so we're talking about the angles inside a triangle. We have 180 degrees. So I know that 4 times some common factor plus 7 times that same number plus 9 times that same number is going to be equal to 180 degrees. I can simplify. Um, 4 plus 7 plus 9 is 20. So I have 20x equals 180 divided by 20 divided by 20 so that x is equal to 9. And if I'm finding all three angles, I'll do 4 times 9 is 36 degrees. And 7 times 9 is 63 degrees. And 9 times 9 is 80 one degrees. And you always check your answers by just making sure that they add to whatever they say they're going to add to. Um, find the measure of the angles, or the measures of the angles for the ratio is 11 to 2 to 5. Find the measure of the largest, which means whenever after I find x, I'm just going to be looking at the 11, but I have to use all three before. So I'll do the same process we've been doing, adding to 180 because we are talking about the angles in a triangle. Oh, I left off my x. Okay, so I will have 18x is equal to 180. Divide both sides by 18, and I will get x is equal to 10. But I only need the largest angle, so instead of doing 11 times 10, 2 times 10, and 5 times 10, the largest angle will have the largest number in the ratio. So I'm just going to do 11 times 10. So 110 degrees is my largest angle. So we didn't have to do as much, so read your directions. You don't have to do um, more than you need. Okay. Um, the ratio of measures of the sides of a triangle is 2 to 8 to 9. Sides, by the way, never add to 180, so don't just jump the gun here. Keep reading. If the perimeter, meaning adding up the sides, is 76, find the length of each side. So in this case, I'm going to do my ratio 2x plus 8x plus 9x. In this case, those ratios multiplied by their common factors have to add to the perimeter, which is 76. So 2 plus 8 plus 9 is 19x equals to 76. If I divide both sides by 76, okay, I will get 4. And so then I will do 2 times 4, and that is 8. And I will do 8 times 4, okay, which is 32. And I will do 9 times 4, which is 36. So I have these three. Okay. Same thing for number 10. Ratios, measures of the sides, keyword sides, of a triangle is 10 to 5, 15 to 16 if the perimeter is 217. So again, I'm not adding to 180 because it's not talking about angles in a triangle or supplementary. It gives us what it's going to add to. Also, I'll do 10x plus 15x plus 6x is equal to 217. 
and then I will do 10 plus 15 plus 6 is 31. X is equal to 217. When I divide both sides by 31, I get 7. Okay, And it just wants the shortest side, so I'm going to plug it with the smallest number. So 6 times 7 is 42. Okay, um, And then for the sake of units, we have 42 meters, and these we have all three of these are inches. Left that off earlier. All right, so then we're going to talk about what is a proportion. Okay, um, a proportion is an equation, which means you have an equal sign with an equation, as that part of the word equal is almost in the equation, that states that two ratios are equal. So a proportion would be like some of the ratios we've seen prior to. We we'll set equal to each other. That's a proportion of setting ratios equal to each other. It's so like a fraction equal to a fraction um, is a proportion. So if I have the fraction or the ratio A to B, it's going to be equal to the proportion C to D. Okay. Cross product property for any proportion means I can cross multiply, which means if I have an A to B equals C to D, I can multiply a times D to equal B times C. Okay, equal sign has to be there in the middle. It was there to start, it's there still. Okay. So if we just practice a few of these, we won't do all of these. We'll kind of um, go through and do a few of them. Maybe we'll just do the odds. Okay, so we don't need to do all of them. So we do our cross product. We'll do four times seven and four times seven will be equal to 2 times x, okay, and 4 times 7 is 28, equal to 2x, divide both sides by 2, and so that x is equal to 14. Let's do 13. We'll do 19 times x minus 1 is equal to 6 times 13. I try to make a habit of doing these parentheses because in a case like this, I have to distribute my 19 here so that I have 19x minus 19 is equal to 6 times 13, which is 90, or which is 78. And then when I add 19 to both sides, okay, I'll get 19x is equal to 97. Divide both sides by 19, and I'll get x is 5.1. Okay. So number 15 we'll have 10 times 9 for our cross product is equal to 20 times 2x minus 9. So I'll have 90 is equal to distribute the 20, 40x minus 180. Okay, and then I will add the 180 to both sides so that I have 270 is equal to 40x. Divide both sides by 40. So that x is equal to 6.75. Okay. Cross product again. 18 times x minus 20 is equal to 3 times x minus 11. And just a reminder, these are still ratios. So it is x minus 20 to 3 is a comparison equal to a different comparison that happens to be equivalent, x minus 11 to 18. And I'll distribute that 18 so that I get 18x minus 2 times 18 is 360 equal to 3x minus 33. I'm going to subtract my 3x from both sides. At the same time, I'm going to add my 360 to both sides so that I have 15x on the left is equal to 327 because it's a negative 33 and a positive 360. Divide this by 15, divide this by 15 so that I get x is equal to 21.8. Okay, last one. 
And if you need extra practice, you can go to the evens and then message your teacher and we can check them if you want, but you'll have practice like this on your homework as well. So you don't have to worry about finishing those other five on the right. All right. And we'll do five times 27 is equal to x plus five times x minus one. Okay, so it's a little more work on that part. All right, so five times 27 okay, is going to be 135 is equal to, and we'll have to FOIL this. So first, outer, inner, and last. So you're distributing x through the x minus 1 and 5 through the x minus 1. We're going to simplify. So I have 135 is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 5. I'll subtract 135 from both sides. It's easier to solve these if they're equal to 0. Okay, if it's a, if you notice that x squared and you have another x, to solve this you need everything on one side of the equation. So that's why I want it equal to 0. So I'll have 0 is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 5. What's awesome about this is this does something that's called factoring. Okay, and it's an easy one to factor because the x squared has a coefficient of 1 which means it'll factor into a set of parentheses like this, still equal to zero. Okay, I asked myself a question, what multiplies to this, what I call a constant, because there's no variable, it's not changing. So what multiplies to the constant and adds to the coefficient of x? So what multiplies to five and adds to four? Well, the only thing that multiplies to five is five and one. Okay. Um, Oh, it's 135. It's 140. Oopsie. Hold on, hold on. Erase that, erase that. Erase that. 135. There we go. Silly me. All right. And we have to ask self again, still what multiplies to 135 and adds to 4? 140 and adds to 4. Miss needs to make sure she's adding correctly. And I have to think of factors of 140 that are going to add to 4. Well, easy factors of 140 would be 14 and 10, if you notice it has a 0 on it. And 14 and 10, in a way, can add to 4 because if I have a negative 10 and a positive 14, those add to 4. And so this factors into x. And if you need help factoring, you can look up videos, ask Ms. Porter or Ms. Herbst, and we'll help you with factoring. Um, you won't have too many um, that are that difficult, um, but they are good practice, and you'll do a lot more of that when you get to Algebra 2. Um, and you can always check your answer by refoiling it that back together. But what's great about that is it makes it easy to solve. Um, if you have two things multiplied equal to 0, I can set this equal to 0, and I can set this equal to 0, and solve each one. So I'll add 10 to both sides for the top one, and I'll get x is equal to 10, and I'll subtract 14 from both sides on the bottom one, and I'll get x is equal to negative 14. And so you have two answers for a quadratic. Okay. All right.